morning, and we're turning to the Old Testament book of Joshua. And we're turning to the book of Joshua. And we're in chapter 14, please. The book of Joshua. And in chapter 14. <coughs> Joshua 14. And we're commencing to read at verse 6, please. Joshua 14 and verse number 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now... Lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. And yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, and my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore, give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him, and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephunneh Hebron for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, unto this day, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron before was Kirja Arba, which Arba was a great man among the Anakims, and the land had rest from war. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing, as he always does, to the public reading of his own precious truth. Child of God, this morning, I know it's lovely, and I know it's nice, and I know it's good to frame the many promises of God that we find in the Word of God and hang them up in our homes. And it's always good to be reminded by those promises that are framed and hanging on the walls of our home, of the goodness and of the great promises that we find in the Word of God, especially when difficult and dark days come. But you know, for many Christians this morning, for many Christians, that's the far it goes. That's how far it goes with them concerning the great and the mighty promises of God. That's how far it goes, framing them and putting them on the wall. But you know, child of God this morning, even though it's nice and even though it's lovely and even though it's good to frame those mighty promises of God 
and to put those promises of God on the, on the wall of your home, yet those promises will do nothing for you if that's all you do. If all you do this morning is just frame the promises of God and hang them on the wall of your home, well, child of God, this morning, they'll do nothing for you. Because you see, this morning, child of God, the promises of God, are you listening now? The promises of God were never given to be framed. They were given to be claimed the promises of God. And I wonder this morning, child of God, have you not only framed the promises of God, but tell me something. Do you claim the promises of God? Because you see, the, the promises of God this morning have been given to you, have been given to me, have been given to us, not to frame, but to claim. The promises of God this morning are here for the purpose of claiming, not framing. You know, child of God, this morning, the promises of God this morning are there to stand on, not to show off. The promises of God are not given to make us feel good. The promises of God have been given to make our faith strong. You see, it's through the promises of God. As we claim those promises, claiming the promises of God leads us into victory. Claiming the promises of God gives us new ground, leads us to blessing. And Paul, writing to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, says, For all the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him. Amen. Listen, child of God, there's nothing more sure than the promises of God. There's nothing more steadfast this morning than the promises of God. Do you remember the great promise he made to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 12, 25, for I am the Lord. I will speak, and everything that I speak shall come to pass. No wonder Paul says in Romans 3 and 4, let God be true, but every man a liar. Do you know what claiming, claiming God's promises do, does? Claiming God's promises this morning, child of God, rejects fear. Claiming the promises of God rejects fear, but claiming the promises of God also reinforces faith. It's the promises of God this morning that reinforces our faith. Do you mind the Apostle Paul, by the way, just when we're here? Do you remember in Acts chapter 27, he's in a, great, in a great storm, and you remember on that occasion, every hope, it says, of them being saved was lost. There was no physical hope. There was no hope to be shown. But Paul stood that very night in the midst of that storm and said to the sailors, Be of good cheer. Now, how could Paul say that this morning? Be of good cheer when every sense or sign of hope was gone for them to be saved. Well, you see, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 23, there was a time when Paul was before, was before uh, the council, and they would have pulled Paul to pieces. Paul was going through terrible times. Paul was, they had plans to kill Paul. But the Lord came to Paul this night and said to Paul, that night and the night following the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified me in Jerusalem, so, we, so must thou bear witness also at, at Rome. You know, child of God, in spite of the storm and in spite of every hope of ever been saved, been taken away, Paul was sure that the promises of God would stand by him. And you know, child of God, that night, he didn't frame that promise. He claimed the promise. If I have to be in Rome and God says I'll be in Rome, we'll get there. 
You see, child of God, God keeps. God keeps. And God proves. And God seals each promise. Will you get that this morning? God proves. God keeps. God seals every promise that he has made. This morning we come to a man in Joshua chapter Chapter 14 this morning. His name is Caleb. And it's all to do with a promise that God made him 45 years before where we're reading this, this morning. Away back in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 35, it was there where God gave Caleb a promise. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 35, it says to Caleb, Will I give the land? He knew that God had this blessing for him because God promised him the land in which he was to claim. In 45 years, 45 years, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, held on to that promise, and now the time has come for him to claim that promise. Tell me this. Here's the title of the message this morning. Christian, are you a Caleb? Are you a Caleb? Are you desperate this morning for the blessing of God in your life? Are you desperate this morning for the power of God to be evident in your life? Christian, are you a Caleb? Because you see, first of all, Caleb was totally committed. That's the first thing the Lord wants us to see this morning. Caleb, he was totally committed. Look at verse 8. It says, Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. But listen to this. But I wholly followed the Lord. Look at verse 9, how that ends. Because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. Look at verse 14. How does it finish? He wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Christian, this morning, are you a Caleb? Am I a Caleb this morning? Are we totally committed? Committed. You know, from day one this morning, Caleb, the mighty man of God that he was, was a man who was totally committed and who wholly followed the Lord. You know, friend, Caleb wasn't going about with an old half-hearted commitment. Caleb wasn't going about with an old feel as you like commitment. Caleb wholly followed the Lord. And you know, child of God, this morning, right across the board in the Christian church today, there's too many of God's people and they're living a half hearted Christian life. Their Christian life is just one of half heartedness. There's no fire, there's no zeal, there's no power. There's no blessing in their lives. Child of God, you'll not get anywhere if you're living this morning an old half-heartedness Christian life. Oh, it doesn't do anybody any good. It doesn't do you any good, and it certainly doesn't bring the Lord any glory this morning. He wholly followed the Lord. You know, as I look at Caleb this morning, child of God, and as I look at him here down through the week, you know what I notice about Caleb? Every fiber of his being, every drop of his blood, every sinew in his body, every ounce of muscle was totally surrendered to the Lord. Totally surrendered. Everything that Caleb had and everything that Caleb was totally belonged to the Lord. Tell me this morning, child of God, do you totally belong to the Lord? Has he everything of your life? Or is it just something that you want to give him and nothing more? Because you want to know something, that doesn't do any good at all. Oh, no, no. Caleb, he was totally committed. Do you see when a believer is totally committed? 
and totally sold out for the Lord, I'll tell you something for nothing now. It will take effect on your relationship. I'll tell you, a man sold out for God, a woman sold out for God, will take effect on the relationship that they have with the lovely Lord Jesus. It will. And do you see, child of God, if one is totally committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, it will take an effect as far as the relationship of the fellowship is concerned. It will take effect as far as the prayer meeting is concerned. It will take effect as far as the Lord's table is concerned. It will take effect of everything, of winning the lost is concerned. Totally committed to the Lord. Caleb, he wholly followed the Lord. Are you wholly following him this morning? Because I'll tell you something, one who has wholly followed has emptied himself. Somebody said on one occasion, how do you be filled with the Holy Spirit? He said, you need to be emptied of yourself first. You can't be filled with the Holy Ghost if there's anything of you or anything of me that remains within us. You know, Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, which is your reasonable service. And I can tell you something this morning, child of God, this is how Caleb lived. This is how Caleb served. This is the rule that Caleb lived by, totally surrendered to the Lord. It's total surrender, not no surrender. It's total surrender when it comes to the work of the Lord. It should be the golden rule for every pastor. It should be the golden rule for every elder. It should be the golden rule for every deacon, Sunday school teacher. It should be the golden rule for every youth worker, any worker. I'll tell you, it should be the golden rule for every Christian. The golden rule for every Christian. totally committed. Two brethren come down to the hotel breakfast one morning, and both of them were starving, and they the, the sniffed. And you know, uh, it's powerful the way they do it, you know. The, the, the cook early, so they get the scent out, so you get a real hunger, and then you'll take more of the breakfast. And there was this smell coming from the kitchen. Oh, it near drove them mad. And the wee waiter come out and says, yes, what can we get you? What are you cooking in there, dear? Ham and eggs. Oh, well, I'll have a double portion of that if you don't mind. And they asked the other boy, what would you like? Oh, I, I, I'll have a double portion of that as well. And within five minutes there, they come out with two big plates, double portion, ham and eggs, and set them down. And one of the brethren said grace and give thanks and got stuck into his. And the other one, he looked at his. He says, you're not going to get, you're going to make a start on that. Well, what's wrong with that? He says, you're not, you're not going to eat that. He says, and the old fella says to him, because man, you a lot of bother went into you for you to have that breakfast. He says, I can see that, he says. I can see the hen was involved, but I see the pig was totally committed. No, oh, why, the old pig was totally committed. Tell me this this morning, child of God. Are you involved? Or are you totally committed to the cause? Caleb was totally committed. And God's looking out for us this morning who are totally committed. D.L. Moody heard the call of God in his life when he heard one man ask the question and say, the world has yet to see what God can do in and through and with and for a man who is totally committed to God. D.L. Moody, who was an unlearned, uneducated, untrained shoe salesman, heard the call of God through that, and he said, by the grace of God, I will be that man. Listen, God doesn't need PhDs. God doesn't need a bachelor in doctrinal theology, whatever it is. God needs men, women, young people who are totally committed Christian, are you Caleb? Because there's more. Caleb wasn't just totally committed. Caleb was totally confident. You confident this morning? Take a wee look again down at verse number 10. It says, it says in verse 10, Caleb's speaking. Now listen to this. He says, And now behold the Lord. Listen to this now. 
the Lord hath kept me alive. You know, child of God this morning, here's a great truth that Caleb come to realize. He has realized that he's alive because the Lord has kept him alive. You're here, I'm here, we're here. How? Because the Lord hath kept us alive. What for? Let's ask the question this morning. What for? To waste the time? To kill the time? To spend the time? No, but to redeem the time. Because the days are evil. Child of God, it's not because you're eating Weetabix and you're on a diet and it's not because you're eating healthy. I know that helps. You're alive. I'm alive. We're alive. Because God has kept us alive. And you don't know, nor I don't know, child of God, what our health could do in a day or two's time. Sure we don't. You don't know, nor I don't know what, what our health could do in a day or two's time. And that's why, child of God, we've got to use our time, use our time to reach others for the gospel, to use our time to go through with God, to use our time to make an impact on others for the gospel and for the sake of the glory of Christ. You know, child of God, George McConnell is alive today because God has kept him alive. And he's kept me alive to serve him. And I'll tell you, if the Lord keeps me alive till I'm 95 or 96 and God blesses me with health and God blesses me with strength, I'll continue to serve him. There's no knockoff point for me at 65. Because in the Lord's work, there's no such thing as redundancy. And you can see the power, you can see the power of, of Caleb's covenants. He has his eyes focused on the Lord. Look at the proof at verse 11. And yet I am as strong in this day as I was in the day when Moses sent me, and my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war both to go out and to go in. Boys, no wonder Caleb was brimming with confidence. Child of God, tell me this. Your faith this morning, your Christian walk this morning, tell me this. Is it as fresh? Is it as fresh? Is it as real? Is it more real? Or is it less real? From the day you believed. I'm telling you, when you look at this Caleb, the proof of Caleb was, I'm as fresh as a daisy as I was 40 years ago. Here he is. It's, it's his 85th birthday. 85th birthday. Oh, 85th birthday, he proved all God all right. He says, I'm as strong today as I was then. Is your Christian faith as strong? Is your Christian walk as close as it was the day when you first believed? I'll tell you something now, friend. God not only saved me, he sustained me. And God sustains you this morning. Ah, but look at the purpose of it. Verse 12. Now, therefore, he says, give me this mountain. Here's a man 85 years of age. Imagine. 85 years of age. And he's not looking, he's not going to Joshua and say, Joshua, listen, this day I'm 85. I want a nice pair of slippers. And he doesn't go to Joshua and say, Joshua, I'm 85 years of age. Will you get me a nice new walking stick because I could do, but I could be doing no one. No, no, he didn't go to Josh, or Joshua and say, now Joshua, listen, I'm 85 today. I need a rocking chair. Oh, no. Here's a man tonight who's 85 years of age, and he's looking mountains, mountains. He's looking to claim what God promised him. Christian, are you a Caleb this morning? Are you desperate to claim the promises of God and to get the blessing that God has promised you? So many has lost out, you know. So many has lost out in the blessing that God wants them to have. And so many has lost out in the blessing that God has promised them. Why? Because not committed, not confident. Listen, woe be tied the man. Woe be tied the woman who believes that God is limited. Oh, be tied the man or be tied the woman who believes and who says God is limited. God help you. God help you. I'll tell you this morning, friends, God is not limited. You see, 
Caleb was totally committed. He was totally confident. Verse 7, he was totally courageous. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Benea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again, and it was as it was in mine heart. Will you turn back just for a wee moment to Numbers 13? Go back to Numbers 13, please. The book of Numbers, chapter 13. Numbers 13, we get, we, we, we get the story. They've been in the land, they've spied out the land. Caleb, you remember, was one of twelve spies. Verse 26 of Numbers 13, And they went and came to Moses, and to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, they told him, and said, We come into the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan, and Caleb still the people. Caleb had enough of it. Caleb could take no more of their moaning and their groaning. And because it says there one crowd was saying, we be not well able, we be not able to go in. And look what it says, and Caleb stilled the people and before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. Tell me this child of God, are you a Caleb this morning? Caleb stilled the people. He didn't stir the pot. And mind you, a lot of boys love to stir the pot this morning. Ah, Caleb didn't stir the pot. Caleb still the people and says, listen, don't be, don't be worrying about the giants. Don't be worrying about the walls. Listen, we be well able. Do you know why that was? Because God, Caleb couldn't see the giants. Do you know why Caleb couldn't see the giants for? All he could see was God. We be well able. And the other, the, other, the other ten, they couldn't see God because of the giants. Tell me this, child of God, is this you? You're afraid to go forward in something? It's too great. It's too big. It's, 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 no, no, it's too great. Oh, we can't do this. We can't meet this. I can tell you, child of God, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Listen, there's no mountain too big enough for God. There's no goal that's unreachable with God. Oh, let's get fired up this morning with the Caleb spirit. We be well able. No matter what God calls us to do. I wonder this morning, is there someone here and God has been speaking to you and God has promised you something and God has showed the way that you have to go this morning and this morning you're like the tame. Ah, oh, we be not well able now. No, no, no. We be not well able. Tell me this. What about the Caleb spirit? Are you one of the people that can say, we be well able? No, we all need this morning. No, we all need. I need it as well as anybody. Don't you get me wrong. We all need a fresh glimpse of God this morning. That's what we all need. Fresh glimpse of God. Do you see Caleb? Caleb never took his eyes off God. You get a glimpse of God, you'll soon realize and recognize that we, that we this morning, will, that he is able to do above, exceedingly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. George Mueller, the great George Mueller was on, a, on, a, on, a, on an ocean liner he says to the captain, Captain, I need to be in Quebec for Saturday. The captain says there's not a mission. He says, in this dense fog, he says, we have to drop anchor here. He says, we can go no further. And George Mueller says, I don't care, Captain. He says, I have to be in Quebec for Saturday. Impossible, he said. Impossible. George Mueller says to the captain, he says, I'll tell you what we'll do, Captain. We'll get on our knees here and we'll pray. And Mueller and got the captain down on his knees and he prayed. And George Mueller prayed, I believe, Lord, your promises that you're able to do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. And Lord, I don't see the fog. I see you. And I say, dear Lord, in this in this time, in this very moment, Lord, will you intervene? Will you uplift this fog? Lord, give us a free journey. 
And he prayed for about five minutes. George Mueller did. And then the captain, the captain, he started to pray, and the next thing, Mueller hit him a slap on the back. He says, there's no point in you praying there. The fog's away, and the frog was away. And George Mueller got the cure back. Oh, God help us this morning, child of God, if we limit God. Do you know what's wrong with us believers? I'm and I'm putting myself in we. We have God in a matchbox. Oh, child of God, there's ground still to be gained today for the Lord. There's souls still to be reached for the Lord. There's a cause still to be maintained for the Lord. Christian, are you a Caleb? Caleb was totally committed. Caleb was totally confident. Caleb was totally courageous. Look at verse 13 of Joshua 14. He was truly conqueror. Because it says, And Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Jephani, Hebron for an inheritance. And Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb. He got it. He got it. Do you know why he got it? Because he wanted it. He want, do you want it this morning? Do you want the blessing the Lord wants you to have? Friend, do you want to have the blessing that God has promised you? Friend, go forward and claim it this morning. No, oh, don't you let fear, don't you let the no camp put you off. I remember, I remember, when word got out I was coming to kill Keel. I had boys on the phone ringing me, you don't want to go. Pastoral work, it'll break your heart, it'll smash you in no time. You don't want to touch it, they're all telling me when I, when I said yes. I'll tell you something now, the Lord gave me a promise that I have to go. And the Lord told me the next morning when the devil was on my back, he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Go therefore and gather fruit that shall remain. And I says, thank you, Lord. And if I had to listen to the no camp, ha, huh, my goodness, look at the blessing I would have missed. Listen. Don't listen to the no camp this morning. Go through with God. Friend, get the blessing of God into your life that God wants you to have. And say, Lord, don't be run away from the mountain. Say, Lord, give me this mountain. You've promised it to me. And it's mine. And I want it. Claim it this morning. And say, Lord, have thine own way in my life. May the Lord bless this word to our hearts for his name's sake. Amen. Our closing hymn.